I had less than two hours of sleep. I'm hurting so bad. Every breath I take. I'm just suffering so bad. Everything hurts. My, my head feels like it's being crushed. Oh gosh, it's cold. It's about minus seven. Oh, there's ice on the street. I didn't want to do another winter. I did not want to walk another winter. I've been in the house, you know, six years. I've lived within a, a, a couple block, like a four block radius for six years. Don't have a warm enough winter coat. I'm gaining weight and I don't have a winter coat. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. Even if I, I don't have the money, even if I had the money, I can't get around and shop. I think I've been to Walmart four times in six years. You know, you know, when you, you're well, and when you're okay, you, you know, you go to Walmart three times a week, at least, to run and get stuff, right? For your house and home and yard. Not once every three years. I go out like this because I can't, if I looked at just sat and looked at the walls I I would sink into depression so like 365 days a year no matter how sick I am if I can't walk then I put a chair out in front of my house and sit outside There's lots of different ways that I've survived this long, and that's one of them. That's how I, one of the ways I haven't sunk into, into depression. I've got no family, I've got no, you know, I'm, all my friends have fallen away as I got sicker and sicker, and, you know, couldn't get any answers. People just move on with their life. And then they... You know, no fights, no big breakups or anything. People just move on. And then they, they see you screaming, on, screaming for your life on social media. People think that you've lost your mind. And, you know, for over four years, I was sleeping only one hour a night or two hours a night. And I was pretty out of it. But it wasn't from mental uh, mental illness. It was because from not sleeping and fighting for my life and a brain condition and being ripped apart by chemical withdrawal and not being able to breathe at night, literally. Not being able to breathe, not being able to get chemo not being able to get medical care. Being black it, it took me until this long to understand that I'm not getting qualified healthcare because I'm being discriminated against because of because they've dropped a ball so many times and injured me and they're scapegoating me they're blaming me right in my medical records they're blaming me Out, outrageous things doctors have told me I'm a scapegoat in my family and with this healthcare system. All the times I've been injured, you know, it would be fascinating, and I mean, this is just a fantasy, but it would be fa uh, it would be uh, fascinating to see me sit down with every doctor who who seriously injured me, it, it, uh, misdiagnosed me. A uh, hundred percent patient profiled me, and they were wrong. It would be interesting to see their 
their responses. And you know what? I've seen it all. It's all the narcissistic, innocent, um, shrugging their shoulders and pretending they don't know what's going on. Or, you know, one guy who seriously harmed me uh, claimed, oh, um, I didn't know she was in, in distress. When, when a handful of people at the hospital and his secretary were continually telling him that I was calling and I was in crisis. And he has innocently claimed, oh God, there's a great big dog here. Who the heck of me? Huge dog sitting there watching me in the dark. And he innocently claimed, you know, I've seen it all. I've, I've seen, I know how these people lie. It would be fascinating to see that. But you know what? I really have seen it all. The innocence, then the blaming me. Oh, she's delusional. Oh, well, you know, she was on all these medications. I just assumed she was out of it. Um, I've seen, seen it all. This is why I'm not getting health care. Because they, you know, it's all denial of what, what was done to me. All the lying, all the covering up. You know, I woke up during a surgery. No, they lied about that. I stopped breathing after the surgery. No, they covered that up. Um, I, uh, I was ripped apart from one medication. My body was literally ripping. And I'm saying to the doctor, you know what? My body's going to rip. I can't bend down anymore. I can't get my clothes on and off anymore. I'm going to rip from this medication. No, no. Trust me. She wanted me to trust her. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. My body ripped in three places. Literally, I, I ripped. And my flesh ripped in three places. Three hernias because of this doctor. I was sleepwalking asleep, eating for decades. And this doctor told me that she consulted with other doctors they came up with the diagnosis of sleep-related eating disorder a rare sleep disorder you know what it was all from being prescribed a sleep drug all like decades of torture and suffering and sleepwalking and sleep eating and disrupted sleep all all the side effects of a drug these doctors are responsible for looking up the side effects and stuff Responsible for, for giving me informed consent. They deny that this happened. The doctor, that doctor now who diagnosed me is saying that I'm lying about her di diagnosing me. I can go on and on and on. And it's all lies and cover up. You know, all you have to do is respectfully apologize. That's all it takes. There's been studies within the medical community. When you... genuinely apologize for what you've done to a patient the chances of them even talking about it like never mind a lawsuit but the chances of them even talking about it and mentioning your name are are way higher when you're lying to a patient if you genuinely apologize we understand that you've made a mistake but when you handle all of it in a sleazy, cowardly manner? No, that we don't understand. And now, years later, these all of these, they're all lying. They're all lying about the mistakes that they've made. And all those lies are in my medical record for new doctors to see. This is like, I am the scapegoat, right? I just about wiped out that ice there. I'm the scapegoat, right? I'm going to, I'm going to absorb all their mistakes and sins and foolish mistakes. It's diagnosing a woman who's been given Zopiclone and she's walking and sleepwalking and sleep eating for decades. And you can't just look up the drug monograph, but you consult with other doctors and come up with some rare diagnosis? Come on now. Bloody ridiculous. And this constant patient profiling people, constant patient profiling women and other people that, that, oh, you're not sick, you're just mentally ill. 
People are going to their graves. Our health is being degraded into the ground from this, from the patient profiling, right? It's like all doctors, they shouldn't have access, access to any of your previous, you know, mental health care ever if this, if patient profiling becomes so deadly. Like literally, they're killing people with, with profiling them, with patient profiling them. I will carry all their mistakes on my, on my back as I go to my grave, because they're too cowardly and petty and vindictive. I could not have even imagined that professionals could behave like this. It's the same behavior of a few people in my family. It's, it's all the same. These are all the same people. Blame you, lie, deny, uh, suggest that you're mentally ill, suggest that you need a psychiatrist, you're delusional. All of, you know, anyone who is this personality type, all the same things are coming out of their mouth. It's incredible. All the gaslighting, right? Ba blaming people for your mistakes. Them blaming me for all this medical garbage. I could tell you more and more and more stories. It's shameful. Shameful that we have people this educated and this powerful, so petty and vindictive and cowardly.